there is a huge wealth event which is occurring right now. Now, in terms of the 2020s, this will be the last wealth boom, the last property boom for this decade that we're going to experience. And that wealth boom is going to create many millionaires. It's gonna turn a lot of Australians, ordinary Australians that are hardworking, that are investing into property, own their own property. You're gonna ride 2025 to 2030. You could potentially ride that wave for millions of dollars to be able to retire early, pay off your mortgage and set yourself up for a really great early retirement. We're gonna be covering two really important topics. So the first topic that we're gonna be covering today is the very unique opportunity, which is in Melbourne at the moment and over the next two to three years why Melbourne is actually going to lead all markets overall in terms of capital growth there's a hundred to 300 K of growth on the table in Melbourne and of course the government has slashed the stamp duty there making the market more accessible than ever so Melbourne is forecasted to rebound over the next two years and there's been a lot in the media talking about it so it is out there but I'm going to throw it over to Liana now to sort of break down what exactly is happening in the Melbourne market and what the opportunity is. Thanks, Liana. No worries. Thank you, Scott. So our focus is actually on Melbourne now, and, and we always like to get into a market before it takes off. So um, examples we had massive success with is back in 2019, we were actually fo focusing on Brisbane. We're telling everybody to invest in Brisbane. A lot of people couldn't see it, but then since then, Brisbane had 60, 70% capital growth since about 2020 onwards. We had a similar situation where we were telling people to get into Perth in about 2020. Yeah. And again, Perth took off in a huge way in the last two years as well. So now we're bringing the focus to Melbourne and there's a lot of reasons for that. And we're going to cover that today. So the first one is population growth. I know that during COVID, Melbourne is suffering in terms of population growth because of its, you know, like draconian lockdown policies. Now that's completely reversed. So if we take a look at that long term, historically, Melbourne has always enjoyed the highest population growth rate. So if you look at the, uh, the graph here, the greater Melbourne is in green. So you can see prior to COVID, highest population growth rate compared to all cap cap capital cities. During COVID, it did suffer, but it quickly rebounded. And now again, 2022, 23, enjoy the highest population growth as well. Yep. And that trend is set to continue for a whole number of reasons, whether you think it's um, affordability, and that's a huge reason. Mm -hmm. It's also you know, one of the most livable cities in the world. Um, so that's always been a draw car for Melbourne. The, this is the forecast. This is the government forecast on population growth. And if you can see in Victoria, Victoria population is projected to increase by 41% over the next 35 years. It is the second highest in terms of rate after WA. Now, WA is great. It's got strong population growth. Melbourne will be the second in line. So- um, And Leanne, that a lot of the question is, is it only Melbourne we're investing in right now? No, no, we're still investing. We still have got a great interesting purse as well mm -hmm. in the WA market as well. But Melbourne would be one to look out for now because you can position yourself while there are um, extremely undervalued pockets of Melbourne and undervalued properties in Melbourne um, to take advantage of. So you're not rushing. You can actually get into the property in the next 150 days. That's the window that we are, we, we are predicting. There's a couple of very important things that are coming through. And if you miss this window, the market will take off. And when they do take off, it, it, you know, it grows really fast. So Melbourne versus other capital cities. So the first thing that's driving the Melbourne market that will be driving the Melbourne market and should not be a secret to anybody by now is that Melbourne has become the most affordable capital city in Australia. So if you look at the top five capital cities in Australia, Sydney is the most expensive. Brisbane is the second one. Then you've got Adelaide and Perth, which is basically almost the same. Um, and then Melbourne actually comes in the last of the top five capital so, cities. So Liana, this is a very special time in history because traditionally Melbourne's always in second place, right? Yeah, Melbourne should be second place, but it is not. It's actually uh, cheaper than you know Adelaide and Perth and Brisbane, and that does not make sense. And it doesn't stay that way because Melbourne Melbourne is actually overtaken Sydney as the city was the biggest population already. Um, so it doesn't make sense for Melbourne's property prices to be so far behind. So that has to catch up. Yeah, and what's interesting, Leanne, I just wanted to bring up this affordability analysis. This is affordability in Sydney with the current rates. 
If rates were to drop 50 basis points, 100 basis points, maybe 1.5 basis points, then this affordability could actually go to about 12. People could afford about 12. And then you can see here that, you know, Adelaide and uh, Brisbane, there are still some good suburbs in Brisbane, for example, Liana. Yeah. I know I'm personally buying in Brisbane at the moment. So there are some isolated suburbs, but the overall median house price for Brisbane is probably about at its peak with a little bit more growth to go. But once those rate cuts come through, affordability can probably move from 8.7, maybe up to that 9.9 mark. But look at Melbourne, the opportunity here. Melbourne hasn't had any growth, where we can see this huge growth here. But in the green here, we can see Melbourne is yet to have its growth. Yeah, it's Eliana, actually coming, yep. in terms of affordability, it's becoming more affordable more in affordable. Melbourne now mm. than these Dubai and Melbourne in 2021. Yep. And for every other capital city, that affordability has been eroding. It's becoming less and less affordable. So just to be careful, if you are the least affordable capital cities, i.e. Uh, Adelaide and Sydney, the potential for growth is limited because the potential for people to pay more for your properties is limited. Yes. So as simple as that. Now, Leanne, especially if you've got Sydney siders that are paying 9.9, .9, they look at Melbourne, they think, hey, I can transition to Melbourne. We had 150,000 people leave New South Wales in the last year to go primarily to Brisbane. And that is one of the main factors that shot Brisbane through the roof. And we're starting to hear people now, I mean, there's even people here in the office like, Scott, can I relocate to Melbourne? The rents are cheaper, the property prices um, are better, life's more affordable there. So Melbourne will become one of those destinations for internal migration, but it's also got the overseas um, offshore migration pressure as well. Yeah. And on top of that, if you're an investor, you're always looking for value as well. So uh, affordability is one of the big things that you want to look for. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, things like rental return is the property market undervalued. Yep. So Melbourne actually ticks all those boxes, looking at it from a fundamental perspective. Don't look at the yep. history, because history does not help you predict the future. And in fact, if the market has been flat for a long time, a property cycle is 10 to 14 years. So yeah. if the property market has been flat for a period of time, chances are in the next window of time, it is going to go up, much yes. more likely going to go up. Yeah. yeah. So the opportunity is, look, just in the next 12 to 24 months, we can see some really good um, value there in Melbourne. And say, for example, if you were to put today down a 60 or a $70,000 deposit on a well-located apartment, a well-located townhouse mm -hmm. off the plan, uh, it will not be built and completed. You don't even need to settle on it, um, say for 12 or 24 months. You could capture all that growth. You haven't had any wear and tear on the property. And potentially there could be 100, 200, 250K capital growth there. Even if you were to build it, construct it, put a tenant in it and sell it, imagine taking a couple of hundred grand off the table and whacking that on your current mortgage. So this could be a really uh, key mortgage reduction strategy as well that you could turn around in two or three years. Obviously, um, there is risk with having a two to three year investment window. We want to look at 10 to 15 years. But even if you were to pick this up and hold this for 10 to 15 years where property prices are going um, over the next decade, I mean, this is just a really great opportunity to be able to get into the market with very little funds down. How about rental yield, Liana? So a lot of people do compare rental yields as well. What are you yeah. seeing? What are you seeing there? So rental yield, because of the shortage of housing, which we're going to cover later on as well. So Melbourne's obviously suffering a like housing, especially rental housing crisis at the moment. And because of that, rental return have been increasing. So it used to be on par with Sydney, but now it's actually overtaken, overtaken in Sydney, outpacing Sydney is 2.8%, which is a pretty low uh, rental yield. And that trend is going to continue. Yep. So even though here at Freedom, probably about 90% of what we do is uh, houses with a, with a land component, a healthy land component. We also invest into apartments and townhouses, especially for our sophisticated investors, Liana. So the first sign of the boom, Liana, and thank you very much for covering that. So there was a really big announcement by the state government and they came out and said that they're gonna slash the stamp duty on strated property. So that's an apartment, that's a townhouse, anything on a strated plan. Can you unpack what that means, what's eligible, and also what you think the impact is going to be on that particular type of property, apartments and townhouses? Yeah, I will. Um, first of all, why does the government want to do that? The Victorian government is actually broke. And why would they want to give up this, like this would be billions of dollars of revenue, tax revenue, to introduce this policy? Because an even bigger problem that they are facing 
is a severe shortage of housing supply, mm. and they cannot see a short-term solution to that problem. So what they're trying to do is, um, especially in more established areas where there's less money that need to be spent to bring in infrastructure, new infrastructure and so forth. They like to encourage developers to start projects. And to do that, you have to encourage investors to actually get into the property market. Yeah, um, you, you so, need buyers to start yeah. a project. Yep. So they slash the stamp duty. So basically you pay a lot less stamp duty if you buy something that's off the plan, provided that it's strata title. Yeah. So why strata title properties in particular? It's because they often are in a more built up area. So it's apartments or townhouses as long as they belong to a body corporate. And also in these more built up areas, when you do buy townhouses and apartments, they are more affordable, much more affordable. It provides the accommodation with access to all these amenities, but they're more affordable than say buying a traditional house. So the government hopes to use this policy to really encourage demand for investors in particular, because this policy used to be available to only home uh, home owners, and there was a cap of $750,000. They yeah. removed the cap as well. So yep, it's now cap. eligible to everybody yeah. to, to describe that. It's applicable to any of the plan purchases, um, and especially pre-construction, you get the most amount of uh, stamp duty deduction. Yep. And it's available to all purchases, including investors, companies, and trust, and mm. you know SMSF entities as well. So, so business owners, um, sophisticated investors that are now buying through trust, this is going to work for them. Yep. And it's eligible for one year. However, the government has already said that if it's effective, they, they are happy to extend it. Yep. Okay. And we're going into the election year as well yep. next year. So the chances of it being extended is quite high. So this is just an example. This is actually an example provided by the government. So say you buy a $620,000 off the plan apartment, the stamp duty that will apply to that as an investor would have been $33,000. Mm. However, under the new uh, stamp duty concession, you pay you can pay as little as four thousand yeah, dollars. So that's yeah. a significant saving. And if you if you were to buy an established property, you don't get that saving. Yeah, and Liana, the big barrier for a lot of people to start their investment journey is having the funds to get into a property. Yes. And so this means rather than needing a hundred grand, hundred and ten grand potentially to do, you know, to get into the investment market. You might get away with sixty thousand to seventy thousand. You can actually get in. Okay? Yeah, and because of Melbourne market being so affordable now, mm. um, you can you can actually find apartments and townhouses sort of in the six hundred gram mark, yep. 500, 600, six hundred, seven hundred gram mark, which in other capital cities you can't actually find prices. I'm, I'm talking off the plan brand new properties. You wouldn't be able to find them at that price.